Hey guys, Charles Damiano here from the Bruce Lee Collection and today I'm here with Sifu Eric Carr. First of all, I want to thank you for allowing me and my sons to take your class. We had a fun time it was today. It was so thank you very much. And uh, I wanted the fans and collectors to get to know you a little bit. So maybe you could start by telling us your background and who you studied with. I, I know you studied with Jerry Poteet, but how did how did you meet Jerry Poteet? How would that meeting come about? How did All you right. go to study with him? I'll make this short as possible. Yeah. Uh, so I, I was in the martial arts when I was a kid. I never got the opportunity to train with somebody. I, I homemade equipment and I watched movies and things and I, I mimicked stuff. Um, I, I lived in a pretty rough area, of, you know, a lot of mid-year school changes and things, so it was like survival. Yeah. But I just something I was interested in lifting weights and you know Schwarzenegger, Tyson. I grew up with these guys, Van Dam, Salone, yeah. Yep. So this is my this is the guys I watch, and then Bruce Lee changed everything, right? And I was already in the martial arts, but I started following this guy. I met people, you know, as a kid who were into Bruce Lee, and and a couple of us joined a, a school. It had pictures of Bruce Lee and things all over the school, and it was Jeet Kune Do, but it, it it wasn't you know after a couple of years I realized we were just doing. Um, an endless like stream of techniques, yeah. you know. And at some point, I, I just I didn't feel uh, I didn't know why, but something wasn't quite right. Well, I have magazines. This was a 2000 uh, of um, back when Jason Scott Lee and Dragon. And yeah. That. And I remember seeing Jerry Poteet's name in that from '93, right? When I when I got when I bought it, I never heard of the guy before. Um, but uh, I thought I'd give him a call. Wow. So I was like, you know what? I, I'll see what's up. And, and I and I gave uh, I gave him a call, and his wife Brian answered. Jerry was in the UK, I remember everything clearly, in the UK doing a, uh, a seminar. She said he'll be back, you know, Tuesday, give him a couple of days to decompress her exact words. So I called back, she answers the phone, I'm stumbling, oh, you know, it's me. And so, so she says, oh yeah, honey, hold on. And I'm like, okay. And he answers the phone, hello? And he's real cool, right? And we talked a little bit and he says, uh, how about, um, you know, he asked me some questions, we had a little conversation. He said, uh, how about you come by Saturday? I'm like, yeah, great. 8 a.m. and I'm thinking, oh God, and I'm 20 years old. 8 a.m. on a Saturday is early. I did it. Uh, I remember my first day, I remember walking in and seeing him standing there. And, and for a moment, I had one of those, oh man, this is one of the guys, you know? But at, immediately, it was just he and I, uh, we had a really great first day. We, we, we actually became very close. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Where did, where did he teach you? Where was he teaching at you? His at, his at his house. At his house. At his house. went to his house. I went to his house. Yeah. Wow. I remember knocking on the door and, you know, he buzzed me in and I, I, I walk in and, uh, I like everything fell into place like everything you said that day I just remember like okay this is exactly what I'm looking for yeah it made sense you know and he went through like the fundamentals the whole purpose of being there it wasn't like just do this technique it was it was a uh, very st structured and uh, there was a cohesive sort of sort of thought process and I remember leaving that day and I didn't know anything I just remember thinking I don't know anything but I know I want to come back so I did wow. I, now was Jerry teaching privately at the time or were you doing one-on-ones with him or was it one-on-one -on -one privately setting? so really? yeah one-on-one -on -one privately wow. so Jerry taught a once, a, once in a while he would go to like a seminar right and he would do a group or we'd have one here once a year workshop <laughs> yeah but um but yeah my training with Jerry was one-on-one -on -one. Wow. so I got him yeah. how long did you actually train with him 12, 12 years, years. 12. so up to the point of his passing I was with him when he passed was actually, yeah, wow. yeah we, were, we were very close yeah so he passed when? What year did he pass? 2012. 2012. Yeah, so it's been yeah, a long time. Now, you knew he was a first generation student of Bruce's at the time, right? When you looked him up? Yeah. And he was the fight coordinator and Dragon, right? On Jason and Scott. He was the movie, Corey, right? train racing, Corey got the film, and he was also uh, one of the extras. The, the yeah, yeah, I think you're right. I think yeah. you're right. Getting involved in Bruce's philosophies and Bruce's beliefs help scare away all the fears that come into actually portraying a legend. Jerry Poteet, who studied with Bruce Lee, was brought in to coach Jason in the gritty style of the master. Bruce was a fighter, I mean, street fighter. He'd get out and he'd get into it, see? So he had that, he wanted that on the screen to be able to say that his fights look real. Yeah, Jason, I heard Scott Lee was like, he started studying JKD after his introduction to Jerry. He, he ended up with it. Oh, he and Jerry were also very, they, they became close. I heard, yeah. yeah. So uh, Jason actually, I remember I was at the house and uh, 
Jason was visiting. He said, hey, we're going to pick up Jason and go to lunch and then go train. I'm like, all right. So we went, Jason met us at the Jerry's place. We jumped yeah. in my car, we went and had lunch, and then we went to a, another student's house of uh, Jerry's. We had a garage set up, yeah. equipment, so we shot some film and just hung wow, out. Wow, yeah, that's cool, that's fun. cool. So, so J JW wanted me to ask you, I know he follows you on Facebook, but he wanted to know if Bruce, if Jerry ever told you uh, the difference of how Bruce taught his class when he was actually in his school at 628 College Street versus when Bruce Lee taught privates or in his backyard. Like, yeah. what was the difference in training when he had people in his school and when he taught you privately? So, so did Jerry, Jerry ever share that with absolutely. you? Absolutely, he did. He was subtle about it. You know, he would he would sort of tell me things. This is what we did here. He never excluded anybody who wasn't invited to the house or you know whatever. Um, you know, there was the elite. You know small group of people that Bruce did train privately. As far as I know, the backyard footage, that's right? It. Yeah. The backyard so, group. Yeah, yeah. At Bruce's house, you know, and, and, and there were things that, that Bruce uh, had time to focus. You know, Jerry would say, look, you know, when, when it was he and I, he was focused and I get to learn all these things. In the class, he didn't get that focus with everybody because he was busy. Oh, okay. But also there was something like, you know, even with my guys, hey, you work up to, hey, you're doing this well. Now watch, here's what Bruce did. Throw in this extra hit, change the timing on it, things like that. And, and I know Jerry actually, when, after Bruce passed, Jerry taught some of the other guys, but he was really he was really um, subtle about it. He never Jerry wasn't the type of guy to get it like bring yeah. attention. So he, yeah. Everything was subtle, and he never was. Um, just to give an example of his personality, he he didn't he didn't um, he basically say constructively like I just said. And when he talked, he never tried to sound profound. He would he was always saying what was on his mind and was in his heart and conveying it so that you would understand. Yeah. There was no pretension at all. And the same thing when he told told me about the past, he would just tell me the facts. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Jerry was part of the backyard group. He was, he was in that group at Bruce's house. He was at the Bruce's house privately, and yeah. he also they individually and, and the small group. Um, yeah, and then he carried on after Bruce passed. Wow, yeah. that's great. So, did uh, did you have to get invited to that backyard group by Bruce? Yes. Or to be part of that? Yeah. That, that was, was like that was Ted yeah. Wong, Dan, Ted, Dan, Dan, yep, Dan Lee, Dan Lee, exactly. Yeah. All those guys were individually invited to the to the to hey, the, Yeah. What a privilege that was. Right? I, yeah, I think the guys, you know, they all got together at some point, you know, but but ritually twice a week, it was a closed door session at yeah. Bruce's house. Yeah. Now I heard you trained previously before meeting up with Jerry. What, what did you study previously to, before you studied? So, with Jerry and, and did that help you with JKD or did you find that helped or didn't help that much? Good question. Started, started I like JKD. to look at both sides of things, yeah. you know, uh, and I, and I, I, um, I've, like I've worked out, I've learned all the forms of Wing Chun, I studied with Shaolin guys, I just love martial arts. Before that, when I was a kid, I didn't have access to any of this. Yeah. There was a school that a friend and I went to, um, his parents got him in and I had a summer job so I was able to pay for it. Right. Jeet Kune Do, pictures of Bruce. And it was cool, you know, you got to your community, you got older people working out with you, people challenging you, and it was physical. You know, you weren't punching mitts, there was, we never hit a single focus mitt, it was just like, you do these things, and it was really soft, and here's some techniques, and yeah, some yeah. of it was outlandish. There were no principles of, none of, none of the philosophy, the fundamentals, none of that was mentioned, but all I knew was like, I'm here, this guy I trained with somebody who sort of worked out with Bruce, and you know, which, which happened a lot, you know, Jerry had told me about after Bruce passed, everyone came out of the woodwork, you know, a Duke and Master, yeah. whatever. Um, but at a certain point, you know, I, I realized, like, I, I wasn't, I, I don't know if I consciously thought this, but in my heart somewhere I knew that there was just an endless open, like, stream of stuff. There's no cohesiveness. Now, we want to keep things open. There's no closed system where you learn it and you're done. But, however, there's, a, there's, a, there's an end goal. Is what works in a fight? You know, Bruce's principles and his work, none of that was, um, so I eventually just, I just felt like it wasn't for me anymore, so that's when I decided, I called, I called another first generation first, wasn't impressed, so then I called Jerry, so I, you know, I was like, I remember this guy from the magazine, you know, 10 yeah. years ago, whatever, and, and it, the doors opened up, and I went, and we immediately bonded, and uh, I know Fran called me a couple of days later, was, you know, a friend's Jerry's wife, Jerry's right? wife, yeah, she said, hey, I want to let you know that Jerry had a really good time with you the other day, I haven't seen him like this in a while, I'm, they're really, I'm 20 years old, I thought, yeah, and we were, we were close, like a lot of us were close with Jerry, he was a father to all, a lot of us. Yeah, we all had our our bond, but that's how I ended up. Yeah, studying with Jerry. That's great. That's great. Now, how did you meet Shannon and Linda? Like, what was that like? When did you meet them? Um, was it introduced to, by Jerry, or did you meet them separately somewhere else? No, I. You know, Jerry and Linda were very close, and she he made sure everyone was respectful of you know that was a sacred relationship for him. Um, but uh, it was at a uh, a Bruce Lee uh, one of the Bruce Lee. Uh, 
events. Oh, foundation the, events. The, yeah. the, the, the banquets they were running. Uh, you know, the memorial banquets. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, Way back. Well, yeah. I went with Jerry. He, I remember he called me. Did you me. go to the one in Seattle, San Francisco? I, Which one did you I go to? I went to one in LA way back. Oh, me I too. went to Seattle. I went, I to, went San to that Francisco. one. I, I must have been there with you. We okay. probably didn't know each other. Okay, then. awesome. Did you visit the grave site when you went to the one in I, Seattle? Yes. Yeah, I did yeah. too. When awesome. Linda was there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, I was right, at so that one. So we were just there and we didn't know it. That's crazy. I was at that one also. Yeah, even before that, I met Shan. I met Shan in the 90s. It was back when the JKD, there was the nucleus foundation. and. Jerry says, hey, I need a ride somewhere. You want to go? I'm like, yeah. We used to hang out, watch football and eat. And I'm like, yeah, I'll pick you up. So drove him down to this hotel in Torrance. And I'm sitting in a room. A lot of the original guys showed up. Steve Golden, you know, yep. and, uh, and then Lynn Shannon, uh, Shannon comes in with all of her stuff. And she gets ready. And I sort of excuse myself. And Jerry told everyone I was his son. That's how he introduced me, by the yeah, way. Yeah. You were his so son. I, I thought, he thought, hey, just stay here. Just tell me you're my son. He's like, you know, cool in his leather jacket. Yeah. I was nervous. So, I, OK, you know, I, I got out. but. Uh, Ted Wong was there. All those guys were there, and they discussed. Ted Wong. Yeah, they discussed how to, um, you know, keep, you know, further the thing. Well, eventually became the foundation. And yeah, yeah. She's doing great work. Yeah, she is. She um, is. And Linda, uh, Linda, yeah, I met in um, Chinatown here, and then in San Francisco, Seattle, and. and you know, when I see her, it's great. I stay in touch with her to email. Oh, so you do? Good, oh, yeah. good. Yeah, Whatever we're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. And um, were, yeah. You, were you there when they unveiled the statue of Bruce? Yes. In I was actually were you with some of the guys. Were you really? Yeah, so they were eating. Uh, Shannon was eating at the Golden Dragon, which I take them to often yeah. for dim sum. Jerry and Bruce used to eat there. Is that where he ate? I was going to ask yeah. if you knew the restaurant Jerry he ate say, yeah, the gold, he used to go to the Golden Dragon, Jerry Is this say. still in China? It's, it's still the there. It is. Yeah, yeah. It's been it's for, been there forever, but it's I still heard. There. massive. I don't know if it's the same location, but it's old and it's there. Yeah, and, and that's where Bruce used to eat, right? Exactly. He and Bruce used to get dim. So I have a picture, actually, of uh, Jerry and Bruce and um, Jerry's first wife, uh, uh, Rose, and Linda. And Linda's got the you know, behind. And Jerry and Bruce are in tuxedos. Really? And they're sitting there, you know, like James Bond. I don't and think the women I've ever seen the... that picture. You have to show me that picture. I, 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 I want to include you. that okay. into the thing. Okay, if you, after Jerry passed, Fran and I were going through all the stuff. You know, we just had, had him cremated and we we're going through all of Jerry had a trunk. And he told me once, he says, you know, I never throw anything away. It gifts. He kept gifts. Even if I don't want it, I keep it. And that was, wow. that was Jerry. That was Jerry's heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we're going through all the stuff. There's old pictures, postcards between Jerry and Bruce from Hong Kong. Wow. And, uh, love to see pictures. that. Yeah, it was, like his. Who has all that stuff now? Fran, Fran still has. Fran's got great. everything. The, the arm of uh, Bruce took uh, one of his wooden dummy arms, signed it, gave it to Jerry. Jerry has that. that. Yeah. Oh man. Also, equipment that Jerry had made for Bruce and put in the, in the school. Jerry got that back, and it's you know it's in the storage, but, but it's still out there. Yeah, that's great. Man. Yeah, that's fantastic. I'd love so to see that one day. So so. Shannon was eating at the Golden Dragon yeah. with a group, uh, an attorney and some other people before going to the statue. And I took some of my guys in, just really quick high and introduced them. And then we walked with them to the statue and unveiled it. It was, it was electric. It was yeah, that's all over uh, YouTube, the unveiling of the statue. I actually did an episode on that when I was here visiting LA last time. We went yeah. to the statue and I found that episode on YouTube and I included it in. That's awesome. That was great. The statue was great to visit, man. It was a good turnout. And you were there when yeah. I saw that, when the mayor was there. Yeah, the yeah exactly. Speech. Yep. So now, Steve Wallen and I are heading over to the Bruce Lee Memorial statue in LA's Chinatown. So follow me. The Bruce Lee statue should be right over there. And there it is, right at the entranceway. But first, let's take a look back at Shannon Lee unveiling the Bruce Lee statue back in 2013. Wow, this is exciting. Man, let's see this. Wow, look at that. Please, Shannon, would you like to say a few words? <laughs> First, let me say happy birthday, Chinatown. That's amazing, 75 years. And uh, I just really want to thank everyone for their efforts. As, as, as it has already been said, this took a long time. It was a long process. But I'm so grateful to everyone involved and to all of you for believing that there should be a statue here and for making it happen. We're not there yet. Just because you see the statue here today, doesn't mean that we're finished. 
We have now to raise the funds to create a proper installation for this statue, and I hope that everyone here will help us in that effort so that this statue of my father will be here for time immemorial. So, but, uh, you know, my father, he had a school here on College Street, as was mentioned, and, you know, before his movies came out, uh, the Chinese culture in the United States really wasn't represented with as much authenticity as it should be and, and the beauty of the culture and the authenticity of its people, and that was his mission. And so I'm so thrilled that not only will there be a statue here in LA's Chinatown, this will be the first Bruce Lee statue in the United States. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for all of you to the Chinatown Corporation, to the government and everybody for coming together and making this happen. I'm really, really grateful. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Isn't that great? Isn't that a beautiful statue? Everybody enjoy. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, we've done demonstrations in Chinatown oh, over the years. Yeah, for like the Harvest Moon and things. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So why don't we talk about a little bit about the 628 College Street? Because I visited the school also six months ago, and yeah. I was hoping to meet you there, and I saw the gates in front. So, so now, Steve and I are making our way to Bruce Lee's first Kung Fu school in Los Angeles, California. And it's located at 628 College Street. And it's right down this block. Hey guys, we just walked a couple of blocks from the Bruce Lee statue in LA Chinatown, and we came across Bruce Lee's first martial arts school that he opened up in Los Angeles, California. It's 628 College Street, and Steve and I just stumbled across it here. Yeah. And we were just looking at the door and we noticed that it still says down there at the bottom, Chinatown, Los Angeles, Bruce. And I believe this was a temporary JKD school uh, opened up by someone called Eric Carr. I was hoping that he'd be here today so that we can see him uh, demonstrating some JKD, but it looks like this may have been maybe it's a vacated, temporary yeah. school that yeah. he opened up just temporarily. I think it's, that's what I heard, it was gonna be a temporary thing. Because now it seems vacated, yeah. but this was the actual school yeah. that uh, Bruce Lee taught uh, JKD at back in, what year right. was that, do you remember? Uh, 1967. Wow. Through, through 70, right? Through 70, yeah. right? 67 yeah. through 70. Uh, February of 67. Yeah, we um, we noticed the brick walls that stayed the same. They look exactly the same as they did in the 60s. That's how we were able to find the school. And what, what was that photo you said that there was a picture of Bruce coming out of the porch? Yeah, that you Bruce know is of? coming out. You can see his portion in the picture. He's walking towards the school, and James Lee is also in the shot. And there's a couple guys like kind of looking at him, like, "Hey, I think I know who that is." Yeah. <laughs> and uh, but it was right here. That's where he parked his car. And and um, yeah, Kareem used to come to, uh, train at this school. Little Joe used to come here. They were all here, right? Oh, this, yeah. this is where it all started, yeah. guys, right? So how'd you come about, you know, trying to get the location? And like, what are you doing with it now? And then how, you know, tell us yeah. uh, why you teach in the park now as opposed to the location. What's going on? I got, I got answers It's, a, it's a little confusing. Yeah, I know, I hear. So, so I had, I was living downtown from 2003 to 13. Um, before I moved over here and bought my house. And I tried to get that space. So okay. I got in touch with the owner, the guy who, who trained, I, I got in touch with the owner. This is the guy who rented it to Bruce. Bruce, wow. And he's you know, in his 80s at the time, and he said, no, there's a pharmacy on one side. And I went in there, I speak Chinese, so I got to talk to the manager of the whole place. He just hung out in the pharmacy, and he says, you know, you know I got in touch with the business uh, di director in Chinatown. Yeah. He got me in touch with him. He talked to the owner. So on one side is a pharmacy, and the other side is like a dentist office. Bruce's space has been vacant for a long time. It was a doctor's or a dentist office. Yeah. So I'm thinking, hey, we want to do this, put some of the original equipment in, have it as a destination, but also train them. And the guy was like, yeah, I want something quiet. I don't want any, yeah, it's, it's, it's you know, zoning, it's like commercial, but residential. And there really is no parking. It's 1,100 yeah. square foot, but so what? We wanted to get in. So he shot that down. And then Linda, he told me that Linda had tried to get it. Really? And I had spoken to her afterwards, and, and she was like, um, I'll tell you that in a second, but when we actually got in. But, uh, so he shot that idea down. 
a couple years later, years later, uh, a friend of ours, someone we had ended up getting in touch with uh, in, in downtown, she loves Chinatown, um, and she's, uh, there's a lot, Chinatown's changing. Yeah. There's a lot, people are being displaced, you know, uh, the only market there was shut down recently constructively. They raised parking prices. Yeah. Yeah, constructively they evict them, which they did, so people are moving out, it's, it's changing. Um, so you have a lot of long-time low-income residents that were there that are being displaced. And she wanted to give something back some way, so she got in touch with the same channel that I did, but what happened was the old man, who was in his, like, his 90s, uh, he was gave ownership to his son. He gave control to his uh, son. Okay. And his son was like, sure, you know, whatever, go ahead and use it. We don't have anything in it, whatever you want. So she got that going and we worked something out where we were going to do something, we trained in there, and we opened up to the Chinatown community. So anyone who's come in, I tell you know stories that happened in the class that yeah. Bruce, you know Jerry and Bruce experienced together in the class, and all the stuff we got to recreate a lot of the pictures and things. Yeah, I, I saw the opening videos you did of it. I was so excited when I thought somebody took over Brucey's school and is now teaching. It what awesome. a great way to preserve the legacy of Bruce Lee and still continue yeah. with the art. So, so that I was, was really excited when that you was did the big that. Part. Yeah, thank you. That was the big part of it. It's uh, ultimately, you know, this is not how I make a living, mm -hmm. um, and, and for me it was like, okay, this isn't a space that that is, there's no parking, parking's rough, it's, yeah. it's, yeah, so, and it's a small place, we had guys on the sidewalk working out, and then it sort of became sort of a nuisance, you know, a lot of old people commute on, on foot through that area, yeah. we got in, we met uh, Jason Tobin from The Warrior, uh, he's a friend of one of my students, yeah. we brought him out, we took some photos inside, and we had a lot of fun, we use it, uh, we get in there from here and there for like special events. Got you. You know, if you come back, we can we can open it up. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. So so it's not ideal for what I do. Um, you know, and here, people get flexibility. You know, parking's pretty. For how long you've been teaching in the park here? I bought a house here nine years ago, so wow. that's when I started here. Yeah, I was in China. I was in LA downtown. Yeah. In Chinatown before that, uh, in a couple of different spots. But this is where I'm at, and this gives people flexibility. I like being outside. You got parking. Yep. And yeah. and it's just like, you know, I know there are times where Jerry, you know, was wasn't working and Bruce said, hey, just show up and train anyway. Yeah. I get to do that now. Yeah. And then when did you uh, when did you start teaching the park? 2013. 2013. You've been here ever since. Yeah. When, when, and what days do you teach here in case somebody wants to join in the class or find you? How can they find you? Uh website, Eric Carr, E R I C C A R R J K D. Dot com. And what days do you teach here? Tuesday night, 6.30 to 8. So Tuesday night, Tuesday and Thursday night, 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. And then Saturday, Sunday morning, 10 a.m. to 12 noon. And are they always two hour classes? Uh, Saturday, Sunday is an hour and a half. Okay. A little bit different format. We don't do a lot of the empty hand stuff. It's, it's conditioning and, and rounds. And uh, weekends, we put in the empty hand drills. We do some groundwork and, you know, more your combinations rounds. Yeah, yeah. Sort of feel like we feel it out. Who's here? What level they're at? It's all levels. And we get everybody equal work. So. We sort of, uh, we figured that out. Yeah, I thought you here. did a great job with the class. I mean, you broke it up nicely. You Thank had the you. hand drills, you had the, the mitts, you had the kicking, yep. you got some sparring, sparring in, yeah. you did some conditioning. I thought you had a nice balance Thank in the you. class, man. I was it very, took some practice. very impressed, man. Thank you. Thank I, I thought you. you did a great job with that. And I, I wanted to thank Stay tuned for part two as we continue to learn about Sifu Eric Carr's Bruce Lee journey in his quest to learn Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do from first generation student, Jerry Poteet. Also, have fun watching Sifu Eric Carr teaching his JKD class and giving me some private instruction on Bruce Lee's Chi Sao, trapping, and also see me attempt to spar one of his JKD students and much more coming soon.